And I want to point out that word disciple because disciple uh, today isn't a word we hear a lot. And it's different than having like a coach or a mentor because a coach, they'll give you advice in one specific area. A mentor might give you uh, advices, uh, advice in, in many different areas. But at the end of the day, you're going to take their advice and decide how you apply it to your life. Not so with the disciple. A disciple says, whatever you do, I'm going to do. Whatever you say, I'm going to do it. Why? Because I want the life that you have. I want to walk where you walk. Where you are is where I want to be. And where you're going is where I want to go. That's what a disciple is. So a disciple of Christ says, Jesus, what you have, I want. Where you're going, I want to go. The victories you have is the victory I want to have. The peace you have is the peace I want to have. The authority you have is the authority I want to have. Therefore, whatever you say, I'm going to do. So in order to be an effective disciple, we have to abide in the word of God. See, discipleship's not cheap. It costs you. It costs everything because whatever, I'm not, I'm not just like, unlike a coach, a coach might say, hey, try this next time. And I go, you know what, coach, I didn't like that. I'm not going to try it. But as a disciple, he says, do this. And I'm going to say, I don't understand it, but I'm going to do it. Take home statement. Therefore, if you want the blessings of Christ in your life, you must be a true, a true disciple. And we do that by abiding in his word. If you want the blessings of Christ in your life, you must be a true disciple of Christ by abiding in his word. Two things happen when you abide in the word of God. It, one, builds faith, and the second thing it does is release grace. It builds faith and releases grace. Building faith. Let's talk about that just for a second. In order to build faith, you have to change the way that you think. Because if situations, that, that same example, on Friday, you get the email on Monday, and if you're standing there going, oh my gosh, what's going to happen? What am I going to do? I, I, you have no faith. All you have is fear. All you have is worry and doubt. And so you have to change the way you think. So instead of looking at Friday going, oh my gosh, I'm going to lose my job. What am I going to do? How am I going to respond? No, faith is going to start saying, okay, God, what are you up to? What are you doing here, Lord? And so it's changing the way that we think. But that means we cannot be conformed. Pastor Evan brought this verse up a couple uh, weeks ago, Romans 12, 2. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind. Notice what this verse doesn't say. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your actions. See, there's something that has to shift in the way that we think. It doesn't say be transformed by the renewal of your friendships or your dating life, but in the very way that you think. Because your mind is a part of your soul. So if you want to walk in, in freedom and you want to see your, whole, your soul truly healed, you have to change the way that you think. A, re a renewed mind walks with the divine. Okay, a renewed mind walks with the divine we begin to hear what god we are exposed to new ways of thinking like like just for a basic example jesus says look forgive your enemies pray for them well, that's not what the world tells us to do the world says get what's yours stand up do what's right protect yourself protect your name but a disciple says no i'm here to protect the name of jesus and if he tells me to pray i'm gonna have to pray listen some of us have heard that verse our whole life but if we were honest, how many times have we actually, don't raise your hand, but how many times have we actually prayed for our enemy? Instead of complaining about the coworker, you're going to start praying for the coworker. And you're going, I don't know what this is going to do, but I'm going to start doing it because I'm a disciple and the, that's what the word says to do this. So I'm going to do it and I'm just going to trust God. I don't understand it, but I don't trust God because I'm a disciple. A renewed mind walks with the divine because you realize the mindset that the world has given you is off. And so you go hang out with Jesus and you get to hang out with the divine while he renews your mind. Okay. And the second way 
It does it. Romans 10, 17 says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So as we hear the word of God, as we abide in the word of God, inside of us, the word of God begins to build up. It, we're getting filled up so that it begins to show up. So back to our previous illustration, Friday at 4 p.m., I'm having uh, a meeting with my boss. So I wake I'm at my office Monday morning and I'm reading that email. And maybe the, the old mindset's still there and you're tensing up on the inside. And so you have one or two options. You can do it just like you've always done it where you begin to stand up and say, nobody's going to fire me. I'm going to go I'm walk in that office and quit. Nobody gets to fire me. I'm going to tell them what's up. All these years I worked at this company, they're going to do me like this. Or maybe it's the opposite, going, oh my gosh, we just got a new, we had all these plans, we just bought a new car, oh, how are we going to make the payments here, where are we going to find a new job, I guess I need to get someone to do my resume, how are we, and the anxiety begins to build up, and the insecurity, and so Monday night comes, and you're like, it's going to be okay, okay, Jesus, I know you're there, I know you're there, Jesus, it's going to be okay, and you're trying to sleep, and you're tossing and turning all night, and you wake up on Tuesday, and your manager get, talks to you and gives you an assignment, Who's he talking to me like that? He knows what his plan is on this Friday. How can he say that? Who does he, I should quit in this place. No, no, it's okay. God, what are we going to do? How are we, God, where are you? You said you were going to provide. Am I being real right now? Come on. And, and, and Tuesday night we don't sleep. Wednesday, and as it gets closer, the, the insides begin to churn. And, and we don't want people to look down at us. So we all go in, what did you want? What's going on in here? Like we have no idea what's going on. See, but when faith has been built up inside of you, you begin to respond different. So Monday morning you wake up and you, you're at the office and you read that email. And you go, oh my God, what is happening? God, I need your grace. And you can feel the, the, the nervousness and the anxiety come on. You're like, no, 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 no. See, my God says he provides. See, God, you are faithful. God, I don't have an answer for Friday. But I know your word says in Lamentations chapter 3, verse 22, that your mercies are new every morning. Your compassions faithful not fail not. Great is thy faithfulness. Therefore, I will hope in you. So when you start to go, God, I don't know what's going on Friday. But I know there's a grace for me on that day. I know that the promises of God will not go unfulfilled in my life. They may fire me, but they can't fire your promise on my life. And so you say, God, I'm going to go home. I give this burden to you. I'm going to go home. I'm going to hang out with my family. I love my wife, and I'm going to hang out with my kids. I'm going to go to bed that night and sleep like a baby. And you wake up Tuesday morning and the same thing, have boss talking to you, give you sign. Hey, no problem. I got you. I'm going to come in and work as hard as I can because I'm not working for them. I'm working for Jesus. They might be firing me on Friday, but it don't matter because there's a grace and a mercy on Friday. I get Tuesday's grace and mercy. I wake up Wednesday's grace and mercy. Thursday's grace and mercy. Friday, God knows I got the meeting, but there's a grace and a mercy and a compassion that is waiting for me on Friday that I'm going to walk in into that office. So it, that is a radically different way to pray, church. That's not focusing on the burden. That's for focusing on the promise. Because they may fire me, but that means they're going to miss out on God's blessing on my life. See, because I walk in the anointing. I walk in covenant with the Most High. And your business is blessed because I work for you. Because I'm not working for you, I'm working for Jesus. So if you want to let me go, you're letting go of the promise of God. And somebody else will hire me and they'll receive the blessing of God on my life. See, that's a radically different way. See, the first time you find yourself with a burden and you lay down at night and sleep with no issues and you wake up the next morning rejoicing, woo, it's a weird thought. You're like, what just happened? One of my favorite psalms, I forget the reference, but David says, I laid down and slept, the Lord sustained me, and I awoke. That's what it says. The psalm is about him fleeing from Absalom. His son is trying to kill him. David is about to lose the throne. He is anxious as anxious can be. He is struggling. He is weary and heavy laden. And he goes, God, help me just get some sleep tonight. He laid down and slept, and I awoke, for the Lord sustained me. The blessing of God is on my life. So when we abide in God's word, 
faith builds in our life.